Hi everybody, welcome to our breakdown on photosynthesis. Okay, so as we know, photosynthesis is the awesome ability inside plants, or possessed by plants rather, to make their own food from things such as sunlight, which we can't do, we can't eat sunlight or convert that into anything for ourselves, water, which is what we need, but we don't use that to make food, and carbon dioxide, which is a a waste gas that we breathe out. So it's a pretty cool ability for these plants to be able to take all this stuff in and make a sugar out of it. Okay, so at the end of photosynthesis, they're going to produce a sugar called glucose and also a waste gas called oxygen that we tend to need to make energy. Actually, we need glucose too. So plants are pretty important and so is photosynthesis for us. Now, the major part of a plant that carries out photosynthesis is going to be the leaf. And if you think about it, the leaf is perfect. It's broad and it's flat and it sits at the top of a plant closest to the sun where it can get as much sun as possible. So the leaf is going to absorb the sunlight in order to make photosynthesis happen. But we don't think much about the leaves because, well, they're pretty thin. And if you rip open a leaf and take a look at it with the naked eye, you don't see much. However, if you take a closer look at it using some magnifying equipment, you're going to see there's a lot more to the leaf than we actually notice. And here's our cross-section of the leaf right here. Okay, so we're going to talk about the layers of the leaf because this is where the magic happens. This is where all that glucose that your body needs to make energy is produced. So we're going to start with the upper layers of the leaf first and the lower layer of the leaf. And these layers are called the epidermis layers. We have the upper epidermis, which is called the upper epidermis because it's up, it's top on the leaf. And then we have the lower epidermis, which, surprise, it's on the bottom of the leaf, hence lower epidermis. Now, both of these actually carry out pretty important functions. First of all, the upper epidermis. The upper epidermis on the top here secretes a waxy chemical, which creates what's called a cuticle. A cuticle is a waxy layer on the leaf surface that prevents the evaporation of water. That's pretty important because, as we said, plants need water for photosynthesis. So it is not a good idea to lose any more water than it needs to, so the cuticle is perfect for that. So you'll notice the cuticle on the plant because if you take a look at the top of a leaf, you'll notice that it's always shinier than the bottom of it. Well, the reason being is the cuticle is there. All right, so the lower epidermis is pretty important too because it actually has openings and pores called stoma. And stoma, right here, okay, are openings that allow things in and out. For the most part, for our discussion on photosynthesis, we're going to talk about what enters the stoma. So as the stoma pores or stoma openings open up, they allow carbon dioxide gas to get in. And this is important because, as we were saying before, one of the things needed for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide. So as the carbon dioxide gas enters the leaf, it openly diffuses into a layer called the spongy layer. Now, if you want to take a guess, a rocket scientist guess as to why it's called the spongy layer, just think about a sponge. It's filled with air pockets. And that's what the spongy layer, or the spongy parenchyma, is designed as. Okay, There's a lot of air pockets for the carbon dioxide to freely diffuse all throughout the leaf so it can get to the cells that need the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. So that's how the plant gets photosynthesis, or I should say the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis inside of it. Second of all, we have what's called vascular tissue here. Vascular tissue is a fancy way of saying vessels. And the vascular tissue inside of a plant actually has two components. You have one that's called xylem and one that's called phloem. Okay, phloem carries food, phloem food, that's an easy way, easy way to remember it, and then xylem carries the water that the plant needs. Because as we know, you don't water a plant by just pouring water on its leaves. Usually we dump it in the soil, which is absorbed by the roots, and it just so happens that the roots are on the opposite end of the plant. So you need a tube to transfer that water up to the leaves. Okay, so our vascular tissue transports the water needed for photosynthesis. So the water is again going to move out of these xylem cells and into the leaf and up to the parts that are going to carry out photosynthesis. 
So we have carbon dioxide and we have water. The last thing we need is the sun. Okay, so as we know, the sun is going to shine and the leaves are exposed to the sun and the sun is going to strike the top of the leaves. Now the top of the leaf underneath the epidermis layer, or the upper epidermis, is composed of another layer called the palisades layer, or the par palisades parenchyma. If you notice here, the palisades layer is a layer of densely packed cells. It's the opposite of spongy. The bottom layer here, the spongy parenchyma, had a lot of open spaces. Here we don't have very many open spaces. The palisades layer is the site of the most photosynthesis that's going to occur inside of the cell. And the reason being is because if you take a look, you may notice that these palisade cells have all these green dots in them. And those green dots are the organelles or the factories for glucose. These are called your chloroplasts. Okay, so not only do we have as many possible cells inside of the palisades layer because they're smushed together, but each cell it has a bunch, a ton of chloroplasts inside of them. So more cells equals more chloroplasts, which equals more food. So as we can see in the palisades layer, we have our sunlight, we have our water, and we have our CO2 or carbon dioxide making its way. Okay, when these three materials make their way to the palisades layer, photosynthesis occurs to produce the glucose and oxygen that you and I need. And that's how photosynthesis works inside of a plant. Thank you very much.